Okay, in this section 1-5, we're talking about the midpoint theorem. The first thing that we come to is the definition. And so the midpoint M of segment AB, make sure you're reading your notation correctly that we've learned, uh, is, the mid, is the point between A and B such that the length of AM is equal to the length of MB. All right? And so what that means is if we've got a segment, segment AB, then M would be the midpoint if it's the point between A and B, so it must be on the segment. Now, it can't just be anywhere uh, on the segment. Okay, it's got to be the point such that AM is equal to MB. So the measure of these two segments have got to be the same. The only place that we can put M where that would be occur is right in the middle. And so basically if M is right in the middle, uh, then it's going to be the midpoint. And so if AM has a length of 5, then MB would also have a length of 5. Okay, now there's another set of notation that I want to introduce to you. Okay, with segments, we have what are called segment congruence symbols. And so what we do is, sometimes on the segment, you'll have the five labeled on it, the length of the segment labeled on it. But if you don't, sometimes you may just have congruent markings. And so what we would do is, if these two segments are the same length, I could put one mark here on AM. And any other segment that also has the same length of 5, we could also put one mark. And so what that would signify is if they didn't label the 5s there and you just saw the marks, you would still know that these two segments are the same length. All right, so likewise, if we had another drawing with another segment here, and let's say this is CD. And let's say point E is the midpoint of segment CD. And it has a length of 8 here and here. Then what I would do is I could label segment CE with two marks. Because remember, one mark is already reserved for 5. So I can label CE with two marks. Then I could also label segment DE with two marks. So what it amounts to is... The segments with the same number of congruent markings are congruent. They're the same length. All right? So likewise, if I had another segment over here that was 5, then how many marks would I mark it with, congruent markings? Well, 5 is reserved for one mark in this example. Not always. Let me throw that out there. And in this drawing, if I had another segment over here off to the side, that had a length of 8, then how many congruent markings would we mark it with? 2. Okay, so any segment with the same number of marks, congruent marks, would be congruent. They would be equal. Okay, so if one segment has one mark and it has a length of 5, then every segment with one mark must have a length of 5. If one segment with a length of 8 has two marks, then every segment with a length of 8 must have two marks. And that's kind of how it works in, for that particular drawing. Okay? All right. Next thing that we come to is the midpoint theorem. Okay? So notice that the midpoint theorem, uh, it's different from the definition. All right? And here's how it's different. Okay? In the midpoint theorem, it says if M is the midpoint of segment AB, and again, notice that we're reading the notation correctly, then segment AM is congruent to segment MB, all right? Segment AM is congruent to MB. So basically, <clears throat> the difference between the two is the definition says if you have a midpoint, then these segments, the measure of the segments are equal. The midpoint theorem says if you've got the midpoint, then these segments themselves are congruent. And remember the discussion we had last time. What's the difference between equal and congruent? Remember, equal is for numbers, which is what measures are. And congruent is for objects, which is what segments are. Okay, so there is a difference. Remember, equal is for numbers, 
and congruent is for objects. So anytime you're using numbers, you'll use equal. Anytime you're using objects, then you will use congruent. All right, so keep that in mind. So remember, the definition says that the measures of the segments are equal, and the theorem says that the segments themselves are congruent. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, the next vocabulary word we come to here is bisect, and bisect just simply means to cut in half. Okay, bisect means to cut in half. All right? So, uh, <clears throat> this drawing that we have here, right, we have a segment, segment AB, and we know that M is the midpoint because of these two congruent markings. So even though I don't know how long this segment is, I do know that these two segments have to be the same length. All right? So M is the midpoint. Okay, so here's what we can say for this. Since this is the midpoint, this line right here, line MC, okay, is cutting this segment in half. Okay? It's cutting this segment in half. The place where it intersects the segment cuts it in half. So the statement that we can write best, uh, based on this drawing is okay, line CM, line CM bisects segment AB at Point M. Line CM, this line, bisects segment AB, it cuts it in half at point M. Alright, so keep that in mind. So line, the line is cutting the segment into half, into two equal parts. And where does it do it? At the midpoint. Okay, so that's just an example of a statement that we can write using our vocabulary words and using our uh, notation that we've learned. All right? So how can we take this uh, midpoint theorem now and actually answer some questions? Let's take a look at a problem like this. All right, so my directions now uh, say that B is the midpoint of segment AC, and they've given us two segments in terms of X, and they're asking us to find the measure of AC. All right, so now when you go to approach a problem like this, the first thing we want to do is if there's not a drawing, you want to create one. So they give us no picture here, so the first thing that we're going to do is draw it. Well, what do I need to draw? I need to draw B uh, as the midpoint of AC. So I need segment AC. We'll draw that first. All right, so I need segment AC. I need segment AC. And B is the midpoint of AC. So I need to put B right in the middle of this segment. And remember, since um, B is the midpoint of AC, I can go ahead and mark these two segments as congruent. Now, I don't know how long they are right now, so I can't label it with a number yet, but I can label it with these two congruent markings, signifying that B is the midpoint. All right. Now, the next thing that we can do is label the parts they've given me. Now that we've drawn it correctly, I can label these two segments. AB is 4x minus 4. So AB, I'm going to write 4x minus 4. And for BC, I'm going to write 2x plus 10. So I've labeled those two segments with uh, the uh, measures that they've given me in the directions. Now, what is our task? Our task is to find the length of AC. All right, so in order to find AC, I need to find the value of X. If I find the value of X, I can plug it in and find out how much each one of these is and add them together, and then I'll have the answer for AC. So in order to find AC, I've got to find the value of X. Well, how do we find the value of X? We've got to set up an equation, right? So based on the drawing that we have here, I need to see if I can set up an equation that would allow me to solve for x. And it turns out that we can. Because remember, these two segments are equal because b is the midpoint. 
So what that means is I can set this equal to this. And then that's how we're going to create our equation. So I know that the first piece, AB, which is 4x minus 4, is going to be equal to the other segment, BC, which is 2x plus 10. All right, so these two segments are equal to one another. Now I've got an equation that I can solve for x, and it will help me to find the answer. All right, so now, based on the, one of the previous lessons, we learned how to, or reviewed how to solve equations. Remember, I need all the x's on one side, regular numbers on the other side. 4x is going to stay put. What's going to join it? 2x is going to join it from the other side. Now, remember, what's the sign of the 2x right now? It's plus. So when it comes across, it's going to change to minus. What's over here that's not moving? My 10. Make sure it stays as a positive. And then what's going to join the 10 from the other side? Minus 4 is going to come over and change to plus 4. Don't forget, if it moves across, it's going to change sign. All right, so keep that in mind. So hopefully we're getting more and more comfortable with that technique now that we've used it for several lessons. 4x minus 2x, that's going to leave me with 2x. And on the other side, 10 plus 4, that's going to be 14. I'm ready now to divide both sides by 2. And then I have x is equal to 7. Okay, now, remember, that's not the answer, because what did the directions ask us to do? Find AC. We have not done that yet, so we're not done. And so remember, don't put 7 as an answer. You've got to make sure before you move on, you need to ask yourself, did I answer the question? If the answer is no, you're not done. However, we can use this 7 to help us find the answer. I'm going to take 7, uh, and I'm going to plug it in here for x. Well, what's 4 times 7? Okay, 7 times 4 is uh, 28. And then I subtract 4 from that. 28 minus 4 makes this segment have a length of 24. All right. Now I'm going to take the 7 and plug it in here because this x is also 7. 7 times 2 is uh, 14. And 14 plus 10 will give me 24. And so that's a pretty good indication that I've done it correctly because I get the same thing for both segments. And we already knew that they had to be equal. So if you got 24 here and 34 here, then you know you probably did something wrong because these have to be the same. And now, what did they ask me for AC? Well, AC is the whole thing, right? So how am I going to get the whole thing? I need to add 24 plus 24 to give me my answer of 48. All right, so 48 is the correct answer here. Now, like I say, make sure that you complete the problem. Make sure that you don't move on until you always ask yourself, have I answered the question, right? Because if you put 7, that's not right. If you put 24, it's not right. The correct answer is 48 because they asked for AC. So be careful with that. Uh, let's try another example. All right, so in this case, our directions are the same. B is the midpoint of AC, so we will draw that out again. So here's AC, and we have B as the midpoint of AC. So now I can label the parts that they've given me. And so AC is 3x plus 1, or 3x minus 1. Now notice AC is the entire segment. So make sure you label that as the full segment. BC is 12 minus x. And it's asking me to find AB. So AB is the part that is missing here. AB is the part that's missing. All right? Now, <clears throat> the next thing that we've got to do is, once again, in order for me to find AB, I need to find out the value of x. So again, if we want to find the out value of x, we have to set up an equation. All right, so what we need to do is we need to kind of think about um, the equation that we can set up here. Now, can I say 3x minus 1 equals 12 minus x? Are these two the same? Okay, the answer is no. You can't just set these equal like you did on the last one because remember, it's segment AB and segment BC that are the same because of the midpoint. So this half is not equal to the whole thing. But that does give us an indication of what we could do to set up a correct equation. We just said that this is half of the whole thing. And so 
what we need to do is we need to make sure that we understand that this is half of this. Well, if something is half of something else, what would you need to do to make it equal? You'd have to multiply it times 2, wouldn't you? So like, for example, if I had uh, 5 is half of 10, well, what do I need to do to 5 to make it equal to 10? I need to multiply it times 2. Okay, so if I take this half and do it times 2, then I can set it equal to the whole thing. So here's the equation I'm going to use. 3x minus 1 equals, now remember, it's not equal to 12 minus x. It's equal to 2 times 12 minus x. All right, so let me stop right there and make sure everybody was able to follow me on that. Remember, these two things are not the same. This is twice as big as the 12 minus x. So to make it equal, I need to multiply it times 2. Just like 10 is twice as big as 5, so I need to multiply 5 times 2 to make it equal to 10. All right, so the same idea is happening here. So now that we've got the correct equation, we just need to now solve it for x, and then we can plug it back in and find ab. All right, so now on this side, there's nothing to do here yet. 3x minus 1 will stay the same. But on the other side, I can use the distributive property. Remember, the number on the outside multiplies by everything on the inside. So I've got 2 times 12. That'll give me 24 here. Keep your sign straight on the next one. Positive times a negative is a negative. 2 times x is 2x. And so now that we've done that, we can go to our next step, which is move all the x's to one side, regular numbers on the other. So 3x will stay exactly where it is. It's not moving. What's going to join it from the other side? 2x, but what's the sign of it? Minus 2x will come across and change to plus 2x. Remember, anytime you move a term across the equal sign, it must change signs. If it doesn't move across the equal, it will not change the sign. So like here on the other side, what's staying put that's not moving? 24, it will stay there and retain the same sign. Now what's going to join it from the other side? Minus 1 will come over here and change to plus 1. And so remember, that technique of moving the terms saves you some steps over the old method. So hopefully you're feel, feeling comfortable utilizing that method now. Okay, we're not quite finished. Let's go ahead and finish solving the equation. 3x plus 2x, there's 5x. And 24 plus 1 will make 25. Now we just need to divide both sides by 5. And then my x is equal to 5. Once again, that's not my answer, though, because look at what the instructions ask us to do. They ask us to find the length of AB. Now, I need to plug 5 back in here, but the question is, where do I plug it in? They didn't give me anything uh, as far as AB is in terms of X to even plug my 5 back into. So I have nothing to plug into here. But remember, isn't AB the same as BC? So if I find the length of BC, that's the same answer for AB because they are congruent. They're equal. So I'm going to plug my 5 in right here. 12 minus 5 is going to make segment AB equal to 7. And by the way, I think you will find that this is number 3 on your quiz. So remember what we said last time. Sometimes in the notes, the problems that we do, one of them may come from your quiz, and that's the case here. This is number 3. Keep that in mind. So nobody should miss number 3 on the quiz since we've done it here now in the notes. All right. So that's it for this lesson. Okay, we'll be back in a few with uh, lesson 1-6. Uh,